This podcast is brought to you by Hanley's Clean Meals. Hanley's Clean Meals provide you with nutritionally balanced prepped meals that will aid you in all walks of life. Hanley's Clean Meals provide numerous intercounty teams with meals. For more information, visit their website hanleyscleanmeals.ie or follow them on social media. Delighted now to be joined by John McEntee and hopefully we'll have Danny Hughes as well in the next few minutes to look back uh, on the weekend's football action. Uh, we had round two of the qualifiers and the qualifier draw now made with Derry and Clare uh, on Saturday and the 26th of June along with Dublin and Cork and then Sunday we're in for a trade of football with Galway Irma and as well as Kerry Mayo at four o'clock. Um, John, obviously, on yesterday, like like a massive win um, for my uh, yesterday. But how, how special was it being in Clonus? Because you could even hear in a couple of the interviews after the game, like Breen O'Neill saying, we're going to turn Crow Park orange and the support. Like, it, it's just really unique at the minute with this Irma team. Okay, listen, you know, we, uh, it, it, here's Danny coming in. That must be Danny in front. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, our, our ma, you know what? We love a good day out, and we haven't had we haven't had much success over the past number of years. So, and, and, and you have to qualify that by saying we've had no success this year either. But we've got a real momentum behind us, and Clonus has always been a home venue for us. Uh, I went yesterday to the match really early. I was there for I would say twenty past half one. And there were busloads of people already there. There was great noise, great vibrancy around the town. And uh, what we did with the kids, we walked down the town, uh, up towards the pits, and then we walked back up again and back down again, just to allow them to savour the, the atmosphere, because Clonus is one of those special venues. It's an absolute nightmare to get to, and an absolute nightmare to leave. But when you're there, you can really enjoy and savour the atmosphere of championship football. Uh, and not every venue is like that. You know, there's many of the venues you go to, you turn up, you go to the match, you go to the, the, to the pitch, to the stadium. Uh, you know, you sit at your seat and, 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 and then on you go after that. But actually around Clonus, you hang about, particularly early in the match, you get two or three hours beforehand and, and then so many kids went on to the pitch afterwards and, and then there's sort of the journey home, which is always good when you win. But uh, so it's, it's special from that perspective. And I, and I can see Ryan's point in that, you know, we brought great colour yesterday. The RMA fan base has always been fairly loyal. Uh, I kind of doubled yesterday. Uh, and it'll be the same the next day around, it'll be a sea of orange. They all come with their jerseys on them. Um, you know, and we'll go to Crow Park sort of with an, an air of anticipation, I would say. And that, Danny, you've been banging this um, Armad drum for quite a while now. Like, they did really come of age yesterday. Yeah, um, I suppose uh, I suppose when you say something enough, um, it's gonna, something's going to happen. Uh, and I just felt, I just felt, felt that Arma had the they have the raw materials there. They certainly have the raw materials there. Um, but I think the big thing, the big thing that Arma haven't had um, is consistency. And I think one of the, I think this last two games has shown. Now, I suppose at the start of the year in the National League, they were going really well. And then they tailed off. Um, and they didn't tail off to the very much. They were beating a couple of, uh, a couple of their last games and they were, uh, you know, they were very close games, Kerry and, and uh, Flatter Grounds. I think Donegal beat them up at Donegal. And then, obviously, Bally Buffet is always a very, very tough place to beat. And, and, and Donegal hadn't been beat up there in 10, 10 years, I think it was, in the championship. So it was always going to be a tough ask. But um, I just think... Uh, I actually initially felt that, that, that the draw that Arma did get in Donegal, I, I wouldn't have... Um, I didn't like the draw that Armagh were getting because I just felt that that wee bit of freedom that they liked to play with, that wee bit of risk that they shown that they were prepared to take against their own, it probably wouldn't suit them against Donegal. But obviously the start that they had was super. Um, but after that, Don- Donegal dominated for fifteen or twenty minutes, and I suppose the key the key move that that John knew will have seen. The key move was on about 21, 22 minutes when when Rain collected the ball. I think it was I think it was nine nine points to one two, and he actually kicked a fantastic point on the right hand side, and that score kind of it stopped that flow, uh, and then Armagh got another couple of scores. Grugan got one, and obviously 
obviously the goal was a massive, massive chance. Not only was it a goal, but I think with what happened with the changes that were made by the Donegal management, I, I felt that was the one the illusion of that that particular game and, and Donegal never recovered when, when Patton went off. Now Patton, for that goal, you know, he had nearly been caught on the kick out before that. Um, and instead of going long and saying, right, you know, that was the warning, he done it he done it again and he was caught. And and I can't you know, Patton is a very experienced player, he's a top goalkeeper. Why he didn't go long on that second play kick out instead of going short when Arma uh, he had already been warned with the first one so when they were dominating sort of around the middle as well Donegal they were getting a lot of hands ball there why he didn't go long I, I just it's a bit of a mystery and then obviously the goal went into the back of net on the back of that he was taken off Paddy McBrady again you be, you've been wondering why they took McBrady off for me I know it's a bit of a they might say he's a bit mad John but a bit better more experienced player or manager than me, but um, I would have put Mickey Murphy in that, and he could have he could have drove the ball long down the throat. He could have played as a sweeper. He would have had the presence in there still to 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 dictate the play rather than being man marked by Fokker every way he went. Like like Fokker never moved, never got involved in any out play rather than just man marking Murphy. But that freedom and maybe Nets would have would have given Murphy a wee bit more of a foothold there and the. But certainly taking off Paddy McBrady made, made no sense, sense to me. Like I'm taking on a goalkeeper, I just would have waited about the ten minutes, you know. So you know I, So just Danny, you have covered a lot there and, and, and there's a lot on picking it and, and and I suppose if you if you think even from the, the kick out perspective there, like he went short to I think it was a Brandon Cole, maybe once if not twice. Uh, and where where the, the, the fo- penalty was Brendan McCall. I think it could have been him nearly the first time as well. I think it was him for both. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that he he made a poor kick out, and then he picked an uh, an accomplished player to give the ball. So if that ball had landed in Umbon Galhar's hands, and Michael Murphy's hands, or somebody got there, you were guaranteed of you know quite confident and sure you could maybe ride the tackle. But he, I think he he exposed his own player, and I know that there's this camp. It was it was the keeper's fault, or was the defender who was sloppy. I actually, uh, the more I thought about this, the more I actually lay the blame or that responsibility for that muck up at the keeper's hands because he shouldn't have took that chance. I think he's a super duper kick out. I think maybe his confidence was higher than 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 maybe what the you know, and he didn't risk assess the situation as well as he should have done. Uh, and particularly after having the initial scare, the ball should should never have gone as short and tight as that there because it just took for another fumble for the whole thing to to go pear shaped. I actually don't think it was a penalty if I'm being honest with you. Really? I actually, I, I, I don't. I, I'm not sure. Even having looked at it, did he actually pull them out of the ground, or did the, did the, did the player just roll around and fall? Uh, but in any event, what I think we've seen Danny with Derry uh, coming into the Armagh game was Donegal had Donegal had a limit. Derry tested them and pushed them and pushed them and pushed them, and we knew how far Donegal could go before they broke down, and they broke down spectacularly against Derry. So they did. So when Armagh were preparing for this game, they knew that if they put enough pressure on them and didn't give them the freedom to move, um, that Donegal, would, the same would happen. They capitulate. Because once you know your limit, this is the problem with, with Gaelic football. Once you know your limit, if you feel it's like you're not able to do more or deliver more, you actually become, in, uh, you know, you come insecure, you become inferior and teams can actually get the upper hand on you because they know where you'll stop. They know where you, you know, where you can't score. They know at what point you're going to break, you know, when you're running up and down the field. Um, or at what point you're not going to actually follow through and, and win the game. And when Armagh went four or five points up, Donegal just stopped because the, they had reached that breaking point twice in the one year. Uh, it just so happened that there was a bit more breathing space uh, in this game. And and like players like like um, like McHugh being substituted and how instrumental is he? <clears throat> the kicking daft tie ball into Michael Murphy when it wasn't even within 20 yards of his reach. Um was another bizarre thing, and, and yet, if you if you reflect on the, the, the 20, 15 minutes maybe after the, the first goal, Danny, um, Arma backed off Donegal. They had, got their initial goal, and they backed off. And Donegal were really good. They looked really, really good for ten or fifteen minutes. Maybe kicked six, seven points in the shot uh, because Arma didn't put them any pressure and they allowed them to play football. And even when we go back to our days of playing, back in the the good old days, Danny, any Donegal team could have hammered you if you stood off them. Mm. And let oh, yeah. them play football because they have real quality footballers and always had real quality footballers. But whenever you got really 
tight and tough with them and, and start to you know, meet them head on, uh, it becomes a whole different ball game. And Armagh, uh, thankfully, yesterday were able to bring that challenge to Donegal. The kickouts is, is, is an example of a significant change from the previous match. Uh, and we put that pressure on them. Uh, and we challenged them around the middle of the field. We won a number of kickouts that we, we didn't win at all uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the first championship defeat. So I suppose there's a mixture there of us learning from the previous encounters, knowing where actually Donegal's breaking point was and actually testing to see if we could achieve that. And like I, I know I, I, I sort of mentioned before the match, it's really, really difficult to beat the same team who are on a similar level to you three times in one year. It's really, really difficult to do that. You can you can beat a good team once, potentially twice. Jesus tried to do it a third time, and, and it's, it's it's very, very challenging. So, uh, because the underdog eventually will win through. They eventually learn enough, and if they don't, obviously that that brings itself a whole that brings a whole set of different questions. But they did achieve that. I suppose what was nice for me was the fact that uh, you mentioned earlier, Danny, about the inconsistency, and that's going to be very relevant to the next game because. Uh, Arma have been inconsistent. You know, we, we haven't, we've won a couple of matches. Let's be honest with the thing. Um, we have, and, and I'm saying this from Arma, man, and I, I, I probably want to try and dampen the expectations here because there's there's chat of us, you know, potential all Ireland contenders, which is a way off the market at this stage. They haven't actually won anything yet. We beat a, we beat a, um, a heavy, tired, uh, probably partied out drone team, having won all Ireland title last year. Uh, and we beat, a tired jade at Donegal team. Um, so whilst we've played really well in both matches and we've gained momentum, I think any area of expectation is ill-judged at this stage. I still think that these guys need to need to beat a team like Galway. Uh, you know, they need it. They, and, and by beating Galway, it would really give them a, a foot up to play in all Ireland semi-final. And that's where you need to be. Achieving all Ireland at this stage or talk of all Ireland titles is a way off the mark whenever you're trying to be... What they've done now is they've achieved... It's essentially first division football. You know they're a top eight team. They've got to the quarter final. So are we a top four team? That remains to be seen. Are we a top two team? I get to the All Ireland final. Well, you know that uh, is within our grasp because the top two teams are on the other side. You know, but the, the inconsistency is relevant to Galway, Danny. Would you think? Because Galway are probably, uh, you, you know, how do you predict how good Galway can be? They can be mesmerizing one week, and they can be, you know, decidedly average the next. Well, uh, on that, John and Paul. <laughs> I call him that. How long have I been working with you, Paul? And what <laughs> I think uh, I've a couple of seasons now. And yeah, well, the, the, the big thing for me and, and Go is, um, is the question of Mark about how good they are at the bar. And I, and I know Paul Joyce was a fantastic player and, and knowledge and he's done everything in the game and all that. But when he came in, I suppose, from my perspective, when you look at what uh, what uh, Walsh had done, um, and I know Polly Talley was involved as well, but they had set, set up a very uh, tough... Um, a hard team to break down in Galway. Yes, it wasn't pretty at times, but you tell me modern football, it's not it's not pretty at times and you have to really eke out results and it probably didn't suit this, this Galway style and I think Joyce uh, really found it difficult after the first, say, four or five games when, when they were really going well, but after that honeymoon period, I think he's found it very, very tough to get some type of structure around their defence. Now, the question for me in this Galway side is, have they really, really been tested in the championship thus far at the back? And while, you know, Monaghan, um, or sorry, not Monaghan, while Mayo were, you know, uh, they were good at the up, up, up front and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if they really tested Galway in the way that, that Armagh will test them or in the way that Dublin will test them in Croke Park or a Kerry. I think when you look at the last eight teams, I think there's vulnerabilities in Kerry, there's vulnerabilities in Dublin. Obviously, there's vulnerabilities in, in, in uh, Armagh as well. So uh, I think you could throw a blanket over any of them teams and, and see that it's going to be very, very close. Um, I think it's a good draw for Armagh because that, that the inclination for Galway will be to go and win the game. Um, and they're not down the road long enough, I think, in that defensive kind of 
setup that that Joyce has now um, he's now undertook a, a more defensive kind of risk averse policy. Uh, but I'm not sure again has that been tried and tested. Um, what I would say is that you know it's it's a really nice draw uh, for both teams. They'll both be confident going in. Uh, they'll both believe like Shane Walsh phenomenal, Comer phenomenal, um, mid Paul Conroy playing the game football of his life in the middle of the field. So you know, I think it's, it makes for a really really good game. I think it makes makes for a brilliant game actually. Um, or something that I, I, I suppose is a neutral you, you'd be really looking forward to watching but I, I'd see Derry of eking through a clear match it'll not be hang, it'll not be hang pretty so you know there's a fantastic opportunity for whoever comes to go in on Mayo there's no doubt there are go in Armagh there's no doubt but I still have question marks over how tested this Galway defence so you're still in the infancy as regards to Joyce putting in that system anyway so um I, I would say uh, as a brilliant chance. You know? But uh, the first thing you think of Galway is is the the forwards, I, and even back on Joyce's day, Affinity's playing really well, Paul. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's sharp. He's he's he's, he's as good I as the guy ever was. Play against Ross Common. Yeah, um, but like for me, the secret there is, is Comer. Like uh, Forker, Forker has been Armagh's best defender for ten years, and uh, well, maybe five or six years that he's gone in there, and he's he's really shown as as a defender. Um, and and he did a really good job of Murphy. So he 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 neutralised a playmaker. This is an entirely different beast. And this you know Comer is a beast. He's he's a huge man, and he's a wrecking ball. Uh, and so will that type of player suit Forker? Will Forker have the same impact on him as he would have on on you know on a silky? Well, who who pick up Shane Walsh, John? Who who would you assign to Shane Walsh? Because uh, Shane Walsh, you know, is is critical to. You know, if you uh, Comer, yeah, I totally, to, but but Falker probably be, better suited to to Walsh because Walsh is, is serious, like. Yeah, uh, but Wal- Walsh's strength is his pace, you know, and I don't think they'll sacrifice somebody to Falker. Not that Falker's not slow in any means to do that type of a job and leave us exposed behind, um, because the priority will be on sort of that sort of group defence. So I I think they, they may well play somebody like. They might play Morgie on him, you know, who, who who could try and act, act tough with them. But you know what? Conor O'Neill is a fantastic find. He's a young lad from Kilevy. Um, he played really well the weekend, done an awful lot of unseen work. Uh, he has pace. He's got a real smart football brain on him. Uh, and I think he's somebody that could potentially pick up Walsh and have a second person, second person tagging Walsh. So the way Armagh play, you know, with, the, with the, you have an extra one or two defenders there, they'll all be, always be on the side that, that Walsh is on because... The threat for him is not the long range point, which he'll, he'll get invariably, or uh, you know the super pass and say the threat is actually him busting through the middle, doing a Michael Donnellan and, and and beating everybody over 60, 70 yards and bagging the ball in the back of the net. That's the threat. Stop that happening. He'll give away a point or two happy enough. You know what I mean? Uh, they'll be happy enough with that. So, um, like, I don't know that Armagh go out specifically anymore and pick one or two people, uh, maybe three or four people, and man mark them all. I think they'll they'll have one, possibly two, that they want to keep tight on. And Finnerty's for me is definitely one of them. I think Comer's going to have to be handled in there somehow. And then the rest of them will look after Walsh and Co. You know, um, because <clears throat> Arma, you know, what's interesting with this Arma's midfield, it would not be seen as their strength. I think the reason why Rain plays out there is is, is the strength of that. Um, you know, Gaul was midfield. How formidable are they? I know Paul Conroy has been brilliant and, and actually he's playing the football of his career. Um, but in the big open ground of Crow Park, will it suit him as, as well? I, I, I'm just not convinced of it because I, I just think that he needs so much more from the rest of his players to get the best out of him in that big pitch. Uh, and I, 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 would be, I would be worried that, uh, that uh, Galway won't profit as much from their forward attack as they have in previous matches. Armagh's defence is really solid. It's really, really tight. Uh, and if Gaul will go out for a shootout, um, it'll be a nice open game of football. But they, they, they will lose because Armagh will snuff them out. I think this has to be a lot more tactical from uh, Joyce's perspective than before. Um, and therefore, I think both this, even though it's in Crow Park, um, the, you know, the game itself will lend, the game will lend itself to Armagh's style of football, I would argue, more than Gaul was. 
Just on our man's style of football, because the first goal, John, like it's it's something we just don't really see in the game. But the work Ben Creeley does there, I think, to go into Jason McGee, then Reen wins it, and like you're probably used to seeing Reen do this with Cross McGlenn, the ball in, Grugan into the top corner. Like it's, I suppose, with the way football's gone and the mass defences, we don't always see this kicking in. It nearly. I think made every supporter appreciate this so much. Yeah, well, listen, I think, you know, Ben got up after them two hits and Big Reddy should have been down for the half an hour because he got two big hits, so particularly the second one. And uh, so Ryan managed to get the ball and I suppose what he was doing was he, it was head up, get, just get the ball in quickly, you know. Uh, the Grugan, Grugan's always, Grugan's been one of Armagh's top forwards now for a number of years. Uh, Silky skills, like his, his one season on that left foot, the ball could be placed anywhere. And, uh, you know, you expect them to pick out them passes all the time. I suppose what you don't expect in forwards nowadays is, is, is to turn and just be as, as half as sharp an eye for goal. And he literally did that. He just turned and bagged it in the top corner left. So it was a, an outstanding strike. There's no doubt about it. The pass was every bit as, uh, as pretty to watch, I have to say. But that's, you know, that's, that's you can see Rain doing that on a regular basis. That's not new for Rain. I think what, what is new is the fact that it happened so quickly in a match and that we weren't, uh, all the t- well, any team weren't just conservative, win the ball, let's sort of recycle and, 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 and pick our pass. And when you think of it, isn't it an ideal time to do those type of things? First game of the match, put the ball in the full forward line, let's test it. Let's see what this defence is like. What can they cope with? Um, and that, that sets up your, your, your plan for the rest of the day. If you think that full back line is dodgy or can put them under pressure, well, then you'll, by damn sure you'll test them for the rest of the match. Whereas if they come out winning that ball, Danny, they're away. Like, it's not somewhere you would see Rory Grugan take up a huge amount uh, in a full forward. Now, Grugan, as John says, Jordan has been absolutely phenomenal. Ironically, you know, he was captain a number of seasons ago and it, it just didn't suit him, um, that role. I think he was maybe taking too much expectation and pressure on himself. And he was nearly playing himself out of a position because maybe the fact that he was captain, you look at Subi Campbell as well, he had been made captain, I think it was last year, the year before, and again, didn't suit him. Um, and that freedom that those guys now are playing with um, has has been phenomenal for them, for their own personal performance, but certainly they've brought a huge amount to, to, to the Armagh side. But I suspect in the first five minutes, it was a plan to go long, no matter who happened to be in there. And if Rian, obviously Rian got the ball and he banged it in, I, I suspect if it had went on now two or three minutes and that hadn't happened, it, it might have still, you know, you were still putting that question of doubt into Donegal, is this going to happen all day? And then the ability the, to switch to a short passing game and moving it through the lanes. Because I think the, the best teams, the Dublin Securities, have this ability to run the ball and also have the ability to go long. And I think that's what Armagh have nearly proved to themselves, but certainly to the neutral and to their fans, is that they can do both. Some of the passes of play, Jarley O coming up, knocking points over, lovely, lovely strike of the ball. Um, even, I would say, people that you haven't heard a lot about, Duffy, Nugent, you know, Nugent in the, in the game against Tyrone, he went to fake outside, and instead of faking outside, came inside and, and buried it. You know, guys that there have added have certainly added to to Armagh's ability to go forward, and you know what are the you know the the forwards that Armagh now possess are as, as good as there is in, in the country, and uh, I think it's a very very exciting time for Armagh football. Um, so I think uh, for Geezer himself, for for Kieran McGinney himself, you know when you look at uh, what Donaghy brings as well, uh, can't be underestimated. Um, and that directness and that bit of um, experience that he's had playing with Kerry. Um, I just I just think that it is a very, very exciting time and you would just hope that this is the start of something rather than, you know, I know particularly in my case, I'm only thinking about we were we were in quick and away as quickly. So you would hope, hopefully, that those players are at the right age to, you know, start something Um where there's going to be a wee bit of consistency and a wee bit of success. Even if they didn't win the All-Ireland this year, certainly Armagh would be looking at a couple of Ulsters over the next number of years and to build the consistency, build the conveyor about the talent for what, to be fair, what Trump have been doing probably since since 17, 18, 19, you know, and 
and all it takes is is one season like Throne proved last year to, to get over the line and uh, that's what it's about. It's about consistency though, you know, and I think listen, it's 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 a very exciting time certainly for our football, like you have to say. Just to um finish on our man, like John, do you think the big thing this year is the game management? Because in the past, like Irma would have let teams back into the game, would have liked that shootout. But even yesterday, when you see Stephen Sheridan gets the goal, even the way they were able to take the sting out of that game yesterday, they did go back and over. But like they were dead right there when they're in control of that game. Is is that one aspect you feel that they've improved on massively this year? Uh, yeah, well, I, I would probably revert back to the first half again whenever we scored that point and then Donegal went and scored whatever it was, six, seven scores. I think they went five up. And over the course of the next 20 minutes, there was a 10-point swing from the five points down to five points up. Uh, I, I know the penalty contributed to that, Paul. But um, for me, that, that was the most important part of it rather than the end because the end, the game was over 20 minutes ago. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The game was over. Donegal had given up. Uh, but in, 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 in that period of time, what they managed to do was just keep the composure and keep playing with confidence. That you didn't see any bickering among the players. You didn't see anybody saying, "Why weren't you doing this? Why weren't you doing that?" Um, you know, they accepted that there was scores been given away, uh, not many mistakes. I would say it was probably, by and large, a good purple patch with Donegal and, and the scored heavy as a result of it. And and a lot of the scores, ironically, were from distance. Uh, and sometimes they go all, sometimes they go over, and sometimes they don't. You know, and that's it was a feature of the Mayo game at the weekend too. Uh, and maybe one of the concerns from you is that when you shoot from distance, uh, the percentage chance success reduces. And they all went over for Donegal during that period of time. But Arma kept her composure and slowly got a pint or two back on the board. I think, you know, Danny, I think you were saying, did Rian get the next score or whatever? Uh, Rian got one at 1 2, and, and, and Donegal yeah. were the name 21 minutes in or something. Yeah. That was a huge score. Huge score, which meant to be just get ourselves settled again. and and a pint or two later, we're back in the game. Uh, and then it's their turn for a football match, you know. Uh, and, and, and in many ways, at senior level, it's about how you limit the opposition during their spell and how, how able you are to punish them. Like, in times gone by, 10 points, 10 wides was 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 probably par for the course. Uh, nowadays, you 10, 10 wides, you've had a real bad day. You need to be kicking two, three wides in a match to win a match nowadays. The percentage chances are, are have to be so high because... You don't get the ball back the way you used to get the ball back. Um, where once you would have had a, you know, you could you could win a match uh, and you could have had 30, 35 chances. Uh, nowadays, you win a match having 22 chances and you have to score 18 of those to win the match. Um, so that, that for me, was 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 what was most pleasing for Armagh, that 20 minutes. Just on Johnny, Johnny Gall, like, um, I think they went to goal five points up, they went one, three to nine as as we were talking, um, but they just didn't recover once that penalty went in, Danny, and then ultimately um, Armara are now comfortable winners. Like, it looks a bit stale when you look at the result and, and look at Donegal, even you look when penalty went in, pointed to cameras to Sean Patton and Paddy McBruity arguing, like, Declan Bonner has one year left on his term, but do you think now he's Going to move on because it, it just seems ever since that cabin result, Johnny Gall haven't really recovered to the level you'd expect them to. Yeah, well, I suppose it's a it's a funny thing. Um, it's a kind of like I would I would compare football on I suppose a downward tra- tra- trajectory on the team to be like a bus. You know, it doesn't come along. You're on an upward curve, and then all of a sudden three come along at once, and and I think that's. A bit like Donegal, it, it appears all of a sudden, but really this last couple of seasons, you know, I think, have they got to a semi-final um, since, I think, I, I, I'm not sure if they've got to a semi-final even through COVID and all the rest of it. So I think, you know, the series of dominations that, that, that Donegal have went through and their consistency has been astonishing. That team has been astonishing, really. But Mickey Murphy now is 31, 32, and their their period of domination starts, could start and end with Mickey Murphy. Like Mickey Murphy was still influential yesterday. He still kept kicked a couple of beautiful scores. Um, I do feel that you know Declan Bonner is just a second stint, and he's four or five, four or five years into his second stint. Um, 
and you know players would benefit probably from a change but then again as Eamon McGee I think said it in the paper there's no obvious candidates to take over so you got to be careful about what you wish for too but Mickey Murphy I think was instrumental from what I know in getting Dagnam Waller to stay on so they're, they're yeah. obviously you know there, there's an appetite there that Dagnam Waller is very very well thought of and you cannot question that man's commitment to Donegal so I think from a Donegal perspective um, and it's it's their business Um it's up to them and it's up to Bonner himself to be allowed to make that decision. There's, he will know himself. Dagmar Bonner's around long enough and he's, and he's, he's experienced enough to know, well, he'll give it another year. And to be honest, I think it's going to be a bit of a rebuilding job. Um, you've got good players there in Langan, Thompson, boys like that, but you don't have an Al Mickey Murphy coming through. And even McGrady yesterday, I, I don't really understand why they took McGrady off. McGrady has been you know, we still keep him on the field. You could get a goal and he maybe hasn't been playing well for 60 minutes, but his experience, his ability, I would still have left him on the field, kept him on the field. I would have, as I said, would have tried something completely curveball. I think Pat went off, yes. But taking on a, go- a goalkeeper just to, to knock it long, I'm not so sure when, when there was plenty of players out the field that could have done that for 10 minutes. I think you run down the clock. People have a very cynical way now running down the clock and stuff like that. So, you know, those type of questions I'll be asking, but I'm sure they'll be asking that of themselves. They will know themselves. I don't, I don't actually think they had a, that envisaged that happening. Uh, no. Because, it, it, you know, uh, the Donegal players played for time. They, they argued and twisted, and I'd say there's probably the guts of 90 seconds or more before the you, you actually went off and before the, the you know the penalty was, was taken. So there's plenty of time to think about what was going to happen. And I think, like you, Danny, they probably made the wrong call. Uh, but I'm not, I have to, I ha- it happens. It happens, of course. Yeah, you know, when you panic, it happens because you, you're not thinking straight. But I think, um, you know, we have to we have to remember too that not only is Bonner there, he also has Rashford by his side, and Rashford's one of the best managers, stroke coaches in the country. He he, he managed Mayo uh, to a learn final maybe on two occasions, and he managed his club to a learn championship. So. Uh, you know, he's a superb person to have by your side. As well as Kerfin uh, as well. Kerfin, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, I, I think their backroom team's good. I think what they need to do is they need to bring freshness to the squad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think some of, you know, they're so heavily reliant on Murphy. And I think one of the, the things about him, like Murphy is just the most amazing talent. Uh, and he's just been arguably one of the best players of his generation. But he's probably at the, at the time of his career where he... Is best served by being a very um, uh, like a like a, a support player rather than the main man. You need somebody to carry the baton. You need somebody to do the hard runs uh, to make the big scores, and then Murphy to sort of complement them people rather than him being the main guy that everything goes through, because he you just can't take that. It's not that he's not fit or anything, but that level of abuse uh, uh, and attention uh, gets to you eventually. And even when he's getting that, you're expecting somebody else to be free and they're not being free. So there's something that needs to happen in Donegal in terms of freshening them up. And, you know, there is this question that's sitting out there about McBrady uh, and what he brings or doesn't, uh, you know, uh, on certain days. And he's, you know, again, like that, he's been, he's, he's a monster of a man. He's, he's hugely talented. But teams seem to have been able to manage him there, keep him off his left foot. And he, whereas time's gone by, he'd have cut in on the inside and, and ran them and kicked the ball over the bar. He doesn't seem to have that edge at the minute. And I think there's something more about freshening them up and freshening McBrady up and if there's more for him to give great if there's not then they need to think of alternative options and that in but itself might change the team around Danny rather than the management I would say I, I, and I totally totally agree with you and I think in the in the job that Gaelic football has become for management it's right change, change, change is always the right thing to do in some cases it, it, it might be a case right Donegal are what they are, so it's a matter of just batting down the hatches and, and as you say, is about getting the freshness in. But certainly, you look at even Ram McHugh's influence, the teams have started to work out how important he is coming out from the back, breaking those lines, setting up play. Ram McHugh might not kick huge amount of scores, but a huge player for Donegal. And, and when teams get him under wraps, again, it's another problem that's definitely solved. I suppose it's a lot where like, you know, in my time, we used to focus down on Charlie Lacey and how influential he was coming out. 
uh, John, you would have played against Lacey as well. Like yeah. hugely, hugely effective coming out from the back and very, very clever player and had everything. Good man, Mark had pace come out. So you know, I think <clears throat> even Ram Q's influence yesterday was it was it's not that that he wasn't influenced in the game is. His arm had him well wrapped up and would foul him when he needed to be fouled to stop him thing. And he gets very frustrated. McHugh gets very frustrated. And rightly so, we're getting fouled all the time. But then, you know, when you're carrying the ball and and at that stage he's slight, he is gonna he is gonna he is gonna get a fair bit of treatment. So, you know, as I, I think it's it, it done all or with the or they sort of have to accept and people have to accept that there is a bit of a change there and it's gonna it's gonna be a tough couple of years until until they can get, you know, I suppose another Mickey Murphy. But again, uh, players like him don't don't grow in trees. They certainly once in a generation type player. And as John said, rightly, he was a force of nature. And uh, I still think there's another one or two years left him. And but as as he rightly said, probably more peripheral than than front and centre. Just then, moving on to the um, next game, and um, they all beaten Kildare two thirteen to fourteen points. They now meet Kerry. Um, just before I suppose we get into some of the, um, I suppose key talking points in this game. Um, John, do you think Mayo are still All Ireland contenders? Depends what contender it means. Are, are they in the mix? Uh, and if they're on the other side of the draw, would they be in the final? Uh, probably a good chance. Uh, will Will they beat Kerry and they're going to beat Dublin? I, I honestly don't think so, Paul. Um, uh, I, I have a soft spot for, for Mayo because a brother of mine was, was involved in the management squad at a point in time, Tony. Uh, but, you know, what what I struggle with, uh, uh, cyclists talk about this, you know, you've only so ma- many matches you can you, you, you can you can burn. There's only so many hills you can cycle up before you actually become exhausted. And Mayo is a bit like that for me in that they're coming from behind too much. They haven't actually really knuckle down to win matches that they should never have to knuckle down to win I, I've watched Kildare a few times a year now whilst they, they maybe restored some of their pride at the weekend they're nowhere near the quality that needs to be to be competing again in the top table uh, and yet uh, Mayo had to come from behind to win that match and I just think that the, the, you know the, in, in that context they've burnt too many matches I think they just uh, they relied heavily on kicking from difficult angles and Paul when you're in Crow Park and you're kicking from different angles they have to go over the bar because if they don't, uh, they're very deflating. Uh, and, and they're not known for their, their scoring prowess. And they've actually had a number of injuries uh, up front in, in Mayo over the past couple of years. That's really hampering their success. I, I don't think they're playing with a full full hand. Uh, and I think just when it comes up against the top teams, and unfortunately they'll get up again, what I would argue be the top team uh, in, in two weeks' time. I just don't think they're good enough to win it. Now, the thing is, they'll go out and try and play an open football and win a match. And Kerry might do the same. And it could become a shootout. And who knows what way things go. And the more chaotic it is, the better it is for, for Mayo. But with Paddy Talley's influence, and Danny will know Paddy Talley very well from, from up here, up in the north as well. But Paddy Talley's influence, there's no, going to be no chaos in Kerry. They're going to be organised. They're going to be structured. They're going to have um, a system in place. And it doesn't matter whether they're 10 points ahead uh, or just one point ahead. They're going to play to that system and they're going to see you at the game. So I just don't see how Mayo um, can shake off uh, that that frustrating part of the game for me. And I suppose the other thing about it is, which is critically important for Mayo, they are so heavily reliant on Lee Keegan to pull them out of them holes. Yeah, you know, you cannot keep asking that man. You can't keep asking Michael Murphy to do it. You can't keep asking Lee Keegan to do it. And two or three years ago, I actually thought uh, when I, you know that maybe he was coming to the end of, end of his career and yet he's still going. Uh, but that can only happen for so long and Crow Park finds you out eventually. If you're relying on Lee Keegan, brilliant in all that he is, he's an absolute you know, star in the modern era but you can't rely on him to keep doing that for you all the time. Uh, somebody else has to do that for you and it has to be the forwards and I just don't think they have enough um, accuracy up front. I, don't, I just think they're relying too, he- too much on what sometimes might be pot shots Certainly on the more pressure, I don't think they'll go over the bar. Um, and I, I just I just see them a wee bit off the top two teams. And unfortunately, they're on the side with the top two teams in it. Danny, like, I suppose it was just a typical male performance. Like, 
didn't go well at all from the start. Um, but they just found a way like they have in the qualifiers in the past. Like, but John mentions there about an over reliance on Lee Keegan. But I think this year in particular, it's it's nearly an over reliance. And I suppose their backs to create overlaps and to create the scores like you're looking. 1-4 or 213 came from their backs at the weekend against Kildare. Yeah, but I suppose I'm only, maybe it's it's a small details, but I would have, you know, obviously I'm talking to, to Polly Tolly and, and knowing him very well. My criticism of Kerry, my one criticism of Kerry, uh, even even last year in comparison to Tyrone, you had Hamsi McNamee all popping up in big games with, with one or two points and that ability to go forward, Frank Bournes even. Um, now, in, in, in my book, the, the Tom O'Sullivan's of this world, the Kerry defenders, they weren't offering enough going forward. And whether we like it or not, the game has changed. And Mayo, certainly with, with Mayo's defence, um, the one criticism that you would have of, of the Mayo's defence is they're nearly too good of footballers. There's no out and out, as, as John would have said, like a James Morgan who will stick to you, he will follow you about all day. He mightn't get into the ball, but certainly his, his, his man won't get any. Either Aidan Fokker, he, he doesn't do the fluffy, lovely stuff. He does the job. And unfortunately, in you know the proof, um, the proof of Mayo is seven All-Ireland finals. And where they were... They were beaten in them all, and they were narrowly beaten, absolutely minimum margins. But I suppose James Horn, um, you know, he's been involved in a number of those, and I'm not sure if the hard questions or he's asked the hard questions, the really difficult questions of of certain male players. And the reason, uh, reason why I say that is that the National League final there. Uh, they had a great opportunity to go and test themselves against Kerry yeah. with a view to meeting them down the line. Mm-hmm. And they went out and they played total football and they got annihilated. And on the show, Paul, we talked about, and for me, I would have been using it as a springboard to say, right, if we did meet Kerry down the line, how are we going to stop Clifford? How are we going to stop uh, Potty as well? How are we going to stop this Kerry team? Mm-hmm. Now, if Mayo go and play total f- football, which they probably will, it's in their nature, it's in James Horn's nature. If they go and do that, Kerry will win the game. What I would have loved to have seen in, in Mayo was something a wee bit different, something a wee bit more structured where it's not total football. I suppose it's like the year that they did play Dublin in the All-Iron Final and nobody gave them a chance, or it was a semi-final maybe, and they were winning at half-time. Uh, because they got into a very structured format, and they were prepared to do what it takes to win, and that's what it that's what it takes in in those matches and finals, doing what it takes. And I, listen, I can only talk about the final that we were involved in, and, and when you look back at it now, it was a very very small tactical, and players making making better decisions, where it would have got you across the line, and doing what it takes. And you didn't have to be remembered for playing open football or brilliant football. It's about getting over the line. That's what it's all about. And, uh, you know, Armagh have done it and John has done it and stuff. But for me, there has to be a pragmatism there for me and saying, what are we going to do to get over the line? And I'm not sure they're they're going to answer that question. Certainly, they're playing one of the best teams in the country, one of the favourites. And I just think that they're not prepared to uh, change now. And... Um, that's where I would see that it's going to be, it might be an epic match, it might be an epic failure, but again, I've seen no evidence that Horn or Mayo are prepared to change and be pragmatic to win. And uh, that would be the only criticism uh, that I would have of, of of the James Horn tenures, that he's been total football and it's been brilliant to watch, but is he prepared to be pragmatic and win? I'm not so sure. The difference, Danny, in winning by a point and losing by a point is huge. I know it might not sound a lot. It's only a score either way, but it's absolutely massive. And, it, you know, there's a whole host of free small things that have to line themselves up. Mm. But actually, your your mental attitude, your your physical preparation, your performance on the day, a wee bit of luck and all that sort of stuff. And because you lost by a point last year, the year before, you know, Britain Ireland lost the Ireland final, doesn't mean one bit come the next day. You know, if you're not mentally prepared and things don't go your way on the day, if you actually don't have a, a very 
it's your understanding of your role, uh, how all the sort of wee small parts fit in to make one integral, you know, unit and uh, and so on and so well, forth. How do you get Mayo across the line, John? How do you get the boys? Because I know Tony was obviously involved and stuff like that. And like, uh, obviously they didn't get the rub of the green in so many you, matches as well. You need your inside forward scoring. You need, if any team that wins an all Ireland final has a functional inside forward line. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll see, you mentioned there, our man, Aidan Newton, score, Aidan Newton scoring a goal. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, any of the guys come on and come inside, um, what do you call him? Connor Torbert. Uh, 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 Connor Torbert to come on. Duffy. They're going inside, Duffy. Uh, they're all scoring. And uh, so you have to have a functional full forward line. And not just a team that kicks points, which means that you have to get the ball in early. If you don't get the ball in early to the full forward line, then the, the damage can't be created. And I think far too often for me, uh, their fellas coming around onto the ball, they're scoring from distance, they're having to break down defences, the, the, the chances are hard. They're not getting enough dirty ball inside where they can win and take an opportunistic chance and score a goal uh, or kick those points. You know, even soft points inside, they're, they're, they're so much better because, you know, this big long range point, as I say, the statistical chance of that over the bar is much lesser than somebody inside who fists the ball over the bar. And suddenly you realise, actually, we've got him behind them. We've scored a point by fisting the ball over the bar. We can do this more and more often. I think maybe Duffy might even score a point yesterday by, by fisting the ball over the bar. So there's That's that right. psychological element. And if, we, if, 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 if we're thinking of Mayo and Mayo winning all Ireland, we need the full forward line kicking, I would say, 1-5, one, 1-6 one, from play. Uh, and I don't know why that's in them. Do we really need Ryan O'Donoghue back, though, for this he, Kerry game? Uh, will he be back? He's been injured most of the year, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. That's the big question, because yeah. there's four points from the full forward line, and that's a few Killian O'Connor for he's thrown in on top of that. So. Yeah. Um, that's the big question but uh, on the Kildare game Danny like Kildare have to be kicking themselves here they were three points up and there's three or four opportunities they really had to to finish Mayo in this game and they just took the wrong opportunity in front of goals when they were on top yeah well you know the big the big thing the big thing with Kildare this year I think has been the, the league the league was a big uh, test for them. Obviously, there was expectation with Glenn Ryan and that they've assembled a really strong uh, management team. Uh, Kildare based men, the passion is there, there's no doubt about that. And when you've seen some of the games that were on in Newbridge, Newbridge is a tight field. It's, uh, you know, the crowd's in on top of you. And those home matches were certainly fantastic for Kildare. Um, ultimately, though, they were relegated. Um, because you know it's it's hard to argue with with the league position when when they were relegated. Um, I think they are. I'd say you know they're they're very reliant on one or two players. Um, you know Daniel Daniel Flynn is again he's 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 obviously on a one on one. Uh, probably in the game we would have played, he could have destroyed the team on his own. But now with with mass defenses and stuff like that, it's just a wee bit more difficult. You have to. have a couple of more things you're bowing that and, and one man isn't gonna carry a team through now. He does need he does he does need more than one now. So um but you know Kildare uh, yes still a bit disappointed but they had a great opportunity if if they were going to progress but as as John rightly said I, I just don't think they're good enough and you know I think what the management can do there they can take a lot of positives from the league. Um I think to come out of nowhere and get into a quarter final uh, is is probably unrealistic for them. When you look at what Armas had to do, Armas been building for eight or nine years, um, and Kim again he's certainly taken off a lot of criticism internally, externally. Um, but making quarter finals of an All Ireland, semi finals of an All Ireland, it's not easy. Um, and certainly Kildare, if you know, there's a lot of positives for the for the year from Kildare's perspective. But they are shy. They are shy. Those, those really marquee top top players, um, and again, it was those top players, those guys like Lee Keegan uh, and stuff that took Mayo through the other day, and unfortunately, just just killed her. Don't have that. Um, but you know, that's not saying that the the year was a write off. It certainly wasn't. There's a lot of it positive about, but they're we they're a wee bit off. And as you seen from the annihilation that Dublin Dublin gave them. Um, 
they prefer it to go. Hessian's block as well it was it was a real decisive moment as well, John. But like when I look back at it, Ben McCormick was he picked the ball up and the ref gave a free out for off the ground. It was bouncing like that. It really seemed like a key moment when they weren't getting these opportunities, Mayo would come down and get the score. That's right. Uh, Mayo, I think, went down the field and got a score direct off that. Yeah. Um, and, but you know what? They are the small moments. That, and, and what they serve to do is, rather than maybe, you know, damaging Kildare, they, 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 give, they give Mayo the boost to go forward and kick a few points. And But like, you know, uh, without focusing too much on the Kildare side of things, because they're not in any more, Mayo just can't keep doing that. You're not going to get those chances again to good oppositions. You won't get that again, uh, Kildare. You wouldn't get, or again, Kerry. You wouldn't get it again, Derry, for sure. You're not likely to get that opportunity to get on Armagh because for start, you would have been fouled on, this, on, the, on the far 14 uh, and you wouldn't have got out until people got back and the whole, you know, the whole space would have been smothered o- over. Um, and when you did get up that field and had that chance in front of goals, there was enough Kildare men back actually to make, to make a a, a, a viable chance and, and, and stop the score happening but it didn't happen um, so that killer instinct is yet to be established by Kildare but I actually agree with Danny they have a fantastic homegrown management team there and I think there's, there's, there's a bright future with Kildare Kildare have a big strong team they're, they're physically very fit I think they just need to work uh, on a bit more finesse uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call a big full forward you were talking about there Danny a second ago Daniel Flynn, like you know, he's, he's an amazing specimen, and he, there's so much he can do. But sometimes his kicking lets him down. He had opportunities for scoring, uh, and and he, he kicked poor sh- shots and things. And like they have a lot to work on, so they have. Uh, but had they beaten Mayo, it would have been a major shock. Uh, I think they've, I think they'd reached their level. I don't think they're at this stage. Uh, I think they can be happy with the year that they've had. Uh, and I think they just need to go back and, and, and continue to build on the progress that they've made, you know. Just a question that did come in by a listener. Um, Danny, I'll give you this one. Um, they're just on about the Mayo matchups on the carry forwards. We've obviously seen O'Hora go toe-to-toe with Clifford. Like, I, I think Mayo have learned enough from that game. That's... Well, I, I, said, I said that, I think, at the time. I, I actually... I, I don't it's not over her I think he, <laughs> Dara said it's like the first time a boy arrives in white boots you're going to notice him it's like the boy with a long hair you're going to notice him and <laughs> it's not that he's not a good a good defender but I don't think he's at that level where he could he could uh, he could stop um, he could stop Clifford I think as I said I go back to the pragmatism needed to win these matches and to be honest with you Polly Clifford needs man marked okay um, Sean O'Shea. Um, I think, I think, I think if they if they get their matchups right, Sean O'Shea could, could you know, if you get somebody to track Sean, he's don't get me wrong, he's a wonderful player, but I think he does need to do a wee bit more from play because he's so good. I'm not so sure if it, be it being out the field suits him. Um, I, you probably, I think, inside would, would be a better, would be a better fit for him, but again, with, 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 um, uh, with uh, David Clifford in there, like y- you want him to be at the end of it. But certainly, I I, I did think that putting Lee Keegan, um, putting Lee Keegan on the likes of Clifford would would ask a number of different questions of of David Clifford. Lee Keegan uh, and there's something I actually read about Philly McMahon. Um, he went down and he picked up Colin Cooper in a semi final or final, um, and he talked about how it wasn't enough just to go out and man mark uh, Colin Cooper. It was about putting him on the back foot. And he vowed that day uh, that he was going to go forward. And I think he kicked two or three points. Three in that final, yeah. Three, three, three in that final. And I think Keegan, it's the same question that he asked the Damer Connolly when he picked him up. Lee Keegan went toe-to-toe with Damer Connolly when Damer Connolly was on his pump. And he, he gave him everything that particular on those particular occasions and again got two or three points. Send send Damer Colony the way. Um and so can the, ga- the game has changed a wee bit, Danny, though, in that if 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 Clifford's man goes forward, Clifford's not going for it. You know, 
unless it's five minutes left in the game. Clifford to be saying, go on, you go, you buy it. Somebody has to pick yeah, up. Yes, I'm not sure the discipline, I think that's where they have to be pragmatic and the discipline around. I wouldn't, I would sit somebody in front of David Clifford five metres and I would tell him, that's where you are for the rest of the day. Do not well, move. Well, there I would do that because it's not, it's not really in their game to... But that's, that's what I'm saying. Again, I would have used the National League final in, in my, in, in my you know, if I had been in that position, if I had been James Horn, I would have preempted the fact like it's more than likely they're going to come out of the province. Okay? History would say that. Uh, they have met Kerry on a number of occasions in the championship. So why not use this some kind of testing ground? You know, it's a National League final. It's, it's not an all iron final. So I would have been using it as a, as a as a kind of a springboard to see how to neutralise the likes of David Clifford, who who run a mock that day, Paddy Clifford, they run, Kerry gave them an absolute trounce and an absolute lesson. So I would be very proud. If you're doing that now, coming up in the in the quarter final of an All Ireland, it could it could go badly badly wrong for you. So I think that they have to try something different. Mayo can't go to toe to toe. They can't do what they've always done. So, I, you know, they have to play a sweeper in front of David Clifford, certainly, and be disciplined about it. But I think you need to ask more questions of David Clifford going the other direction. And, and that's, listen, rightly or wrongly, I, I, I think that you have to, anybody who's went out to mark David Clifford and stop the Clifford lads so far, thus far, I made it relatively impossible. Even last year in the semi-final against the throne, if he had stayed on the phone or stayed on the field, he would have, he would have won the would have won the match for them. In fact, he's went off and, and thrown their all iron champion. So, listen, I I think the two need something totally left field. Yeah, go and go. Somebody needs to go and look at the, the Sigerson final, uh, <laughs> I, 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 where they were beaten, and uh, figure out how that how they were beaten on that day. Is the NUG won the Sigerson? No, NUG. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they they won the Sigerson. Uh, and and Clifford couldn't get now. The ground was a bit heavier. Uh, I know that the legs he would tear it after you know the weekend of of games and stuff. But he was well marked, uh, and there was no space there, uh, and he didn't get away with it. <laughs> I go back to when I played minor. He played he played in all Ireland final against Derry, and That's I went up to watch. It? Yeah, I think he might have scored three six or something. He <laughs> something, something ridiculous, and but Derry went man to man on him. I couldn't believe it. Like when I say man to man, man to buy on him. He was head, head and shoulders above everybody. His waist, like, he, he tugs out slim. Or sorry, you know, he, in his clothes, his short, short and trousers, he's slim. But he tugs out hips like my own. And, and he uses them to really good effect. So he does. And uh, it didn't, he, Prouder, didn't Prouder Corks, it didn't, didn't your boy Prouder from Cork, didn't he pick yeah. him up in the final? I don't extend me well on there. Mm. Was it last That's right. year? That's right. Last he scored. Year. I think he, he might only. He might not have scored, or maybe scored a point on him or something. That's right. He kept now, I have to say, I think I think he was just going through a bad spell at the time. Uh, I, I just think he was off form, but he's he's back playing well. Uh, but like you, you don't you don't mark men like that uh, one on one. You just don't do that. You look at the system, how the system could adapt to it, and and you're absolutely right, Danny. If if Mayo don't adapt their game, they're good players. Is going to what they're saying is, listen, we'll accept. That he's going to score five points, we're just going to score more than five points. The opposite side. That's that's the way, and that's not that's a foolhardy way. I think to play again, Kerry. I, I think of of any team that could sort of nearly make it up as they go along. It's it's Mayo. I, I think they have the ability. They have that ability to to adapt. Like you don't get to to seven finals in a decade being a bad team. They've certainly they've certainly given Mayo fans without the All Ireland. But it's the next best thing. They've certainly given them value for money. They've given some fantastic days, some very brilliant, brilliant matches. They went toe to toe for what three or four seasons with the the best the best team since Kerry in, in the late seventies age. So may, you have to you have to say that that Mayo maybe there's a last punch in them. Um, but certainly f- for me, it's about they if they if they put Kerry out if they put Kerry out. Certainly, geez, you would think that they've a fantastic chance, but again, you wouldn't be surprised if they if they put Kerry out and then <laughs> went to an all Ireland final and were beat, you know. <laughs> but I think you know, as the time for pragmatism is here and there's now, and you have to you have to treat the Kerry game as a as a, as a final um, for me, you know. So just then on uh, the two other quarterfinals. Um... 
talk about counties maximizing their potential, John. Claire, I think you're one of the stories um of the weekend. He was five points down, uh four minutes left to go, and just remarkable how they turned that game around against Roscommon. You know, it was a remarkable game. And most common are damn good side. I don't think anybody should be underestimating the potential that Clare side. Most common were very, very good. Um, they, they won the Division 2 title and uh, they have serious fourth. They genuinely do. So I, I don't think anybody should underestimate the potential that Clare side. I, I actually think the, 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 the story of that game is Todd Collins. Uh, you know, he's come from Ireland to football and, and he was so influential. He, like, he's a real pocket rocket he's in there he's running for every ball he's as tough as nails and he had his chances and, and one of them if not two went over the bar you know uh, and it kind of epitomizes the it's like a microcosm of the whole team they just want to do their best and and they'll never give up they never give up in the in the in the hurling sense and I know well Cop again Derry uh, it's going to be it's going to be a big challenge with Derry them and Derry played each other in division two and there wasn't an awful lot in it uh, Derry were shaky now in, in, in that match. So they'll they'll be well prepared to play each other. Um, I think they'll they'll not be overawed by Derry's defensive strengths uh, and the system of style that they're playing. I think they'll actually be accustomed to it. And, and that in itself will mean that they'll be better prepared for that game than any other game. Like, you know, had had Cork uh, or Dublin going to play Derry, I would have thought they would have had a real challenge with that defensive side of Derry. It's really, really difficult to break down. They were really impressive against Donegal and and, and, and Monaghan. Uh, but Clare have played that style. They know what it's like. And and I think they'll be they'll be well fit for that match. I think that'll, you know, that's that's another game that'll go down to the wire. I I, I don't know if I could call it easily for Derry. I actually think it could yeah. be it could be a point either way. And like I suppose there is a contrast there, Danny, with the way Clare do set up like for the majority of that game. They dropped off the kickouts um, and and gave Ross Common the ball, but Ross Common were just slow and ponderous with it. But like you look from the 69th minute to the 74th minute, um, there was one one three scored by Clare, and like Keelan Sexton's free, I think was from 52 meters, was outrageous, and the way he slotted away the penalty right before that as well, if there wasn't enough pressure on him and then Jamie Malone kicking the winner into the hill Listen it's, uh, it's a fantastic it's a fantastic story for um, for Clare on you know it does yeah obviously John I was saying there about Podge Collins you know and um, but for the management team and they you know this is a this is a county that probably hold their holders in, in bigger esteem than their footballers and for the for to be doing it on, on, on two fronts is is extraordinary and listen ten years ago I think in it was it in twenty eleven actually eleven years ago we went down and played a killer in a qualifier and we beat them by a point in a qualifier match and we were very, very lucky, extremely fortunate to get out. I think one of our players pulled it off the line and two or three minutes into injury time. And Clara were doing something right then and they've certainly over this last ten years they've been building towards a quarter final, a semi final. And and you knew that then, and um, and when you think about it, when you think of that that draw for both counties, both for Derry and Clare, it's a fantastic opportunity. And when you seen the colour that Derry brought, the Clonus and to win the Ulster title, it's, it's fantastic for for a county that has such a vibrant club like the club. The club scene in Derry is hugely competitive, um, and and is taken huge, uh, so so uh, ferocious. In the championship there as well, that um, uh, you 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 can you can see that in places like South Derry, there's just they're just football mad, and and for those for Clare and for Derry, it's it is the story of the year, the fact that they've come through, um, and we're one of them now looking at the semi final. I think I think John spot on. I think it's a very very hard call because they're very very equally matched teams, um. I wouldn't, I think Derry are some of all parts team. I don't think, I think they're reliant on the likes of Brandon Rogers, boys like that, um, coming up the field, kicking points. Don't get me wrong, they're very functional, good play individually, they've good players. 
up front. But I think there are some of all parts. It's 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 about the ends and it's about everything working in tandem towards a common goal. And um, fifteen men behind the ball, Clare, as as John said, they'll probably not be overawed by it. They'll have come up against them. Um, and that type of play in in the division three and division two that they've been playing, and so uh, they'll not be overawed. At it. I think Croke Park's probably a different. It's a different beast for both teams, um, and and the fact that uh, I think Clare played there in a in the leagues. Did they play there this year? Maybe yeah, they both. played Ross Common there in Saturday. Yeah, and and I know Ross uh, Ross Common won. So uh, you know maybe the second time around it'll it'll be good for for Clare to come in on the back of. Of obviously the league game there, but Derry certainly there's something new to it. The fact that they've won an Ulster title, they'll be hugely confident going into that match. So, um, and, and there is question marks, Danny, over whether that state of football will last in Crow Park. Whether yeah. either, you might win one match in it, but you'll not win all Ireland playing that state. I think that's no, the limit. You know, that, not, that's the concern I have with Derry. Yeah, not now. You won't. And um, I would. It, it would be different if they had somebody like a Ryan O'Neill or a Mickey Murphy in their team. But but they, as I said, there there are some of all parts. And and Croke Park is just a different place. It's just a different place. There's so much more space. And when the when the game gets drawn out, gaps start to appear. And that's where um, Clare could find themselves in behind and stuff. But certainly Clare won't be naive enough. They'll know that the, the card that's being dangled there is a semi-final ball. And like that would be of some achievement for Clare football. So I think they'll they'll be pragmatic as well. They'll start to defend on mass. It'll probably not be one for the for the history books, but uh, certainly um yeah, it's it, listen, I think both teams they can only be happy with their season thus far, but they'll They'll not be thinking about that. They'll be thinking of, of that match and getting through it, you know. And just to finish um, on Clare, like before we move on to the last quarter final, it's just remarkable, John, when you think of Colin Collins. He's one of the longest serving managers now. He's took them from four to two. And like, if they're probably looking at the draw, like this, Derry was probably one of the teams they were hoping for. Okay, listen, when you're looking across, you want to invite Kerry and Dublin. Yeah. Uh, and whoever you get after that uh, you just be thankful for it so uh, yeah I, they're in the same division they know that there's not much of a difference between them uh, they'd be very happy with the draw absolutely they worked out well I actually think the draw works out well for everybody you know do you want another Kerry Dublin final not really you know <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm sure you do but they, you know, to give somebody else an opportunity to be in that final against Kerry or Dublin uh, not undermining anybody else on that side uh, it, you know keeps the dream, the GEA dream of at least one county alive that you might get to learn final whenever and, and and then anything's possible on that day. And and given that the dream, you know, obviously a second day competition has been a very big and bold move by the GEA. So given the fact that, that you know, the, the, those things are, are still the one thing and I played in Division 2, John, obviously they, they're a lot more successful than what we were, but I played in Division 3. But the one chart and the one dream that you had was every year the championship brought with it new kind of uh, opportunities and uh, and and that can be very tough in divisions four and three um, to see that sometimes and yeah, they, yeah. they the the phone calls and the telephone ringing and and the uh, and the few dollars you would get maybe playing in America uh, might be a big attraction to a lot of players county players in divisions four and three but when they see what Derry have done what Clare have done um, it makes committing. That wee bit easier when there's that dream of playing a Coke Park, being a quarter final, being a potential semi final. So it's hugely important for the GAA on the back of a secondary competition coming in, I would say. Yeah, it's just um, for that all Ireland, like the other side of the draw, obviously. Uh, Go in Irma, the winner of that play is Derry Clare. So that means obviously Go haven't won the all Ireland since 2001, Irma not since 2003, Derry not since 1993 and Clare not since 1917. So one of those counties are going to be in the all Ireland final this year, which is just uh, terrific. Is the one downside though of this draw, Cork obviously getting over the line yesterday against Limerick, John, like that's the one game that you think could really be curtains here and there probably could be a hammer and dished out in Dublin Cork. Yeah, like a damp swib. Absolutely. You know, I don't want, I don't like undermining any any team, but like they're not at that level. Uh, and, and, and they just, 
that just so far off the pace of the top two teams. Listen, the top two teams are maybe arguably ahead of everybody else by a country mile. Uh, but Cork are nowhere near that that level. And, and I think it's probably, from their perspective, they'll want to approach it uh, and an opportunity to showcase what they, they might have again the best team. And, and they might see Dublin as potentially vulnerable at this point in time. I don't think so. I think Dublin, if anything else, with Conor Callan back and so on, are a formidable force. Uh, they, they, they will want to go into this game and they will want to give Cork the mother and father of all good hidings so that they know where they are. And they need to do that because I think they need, for their own sake, uh, to use this game to build their own confidence, to go out back in the Crow Park and know that they can annihilate teams that are not at their level. Uh, because that's what the old Dublin team would have done. And what it means is that then they can use that as a springboard into the next game. Because otherwise it, it doesn't really help. Like D- D- Dublin don't need a tight game against Cork. Dublin need uh, a, a swashbuckling performance against this Cork team and put them away early and then really annihilate them. Uh, and that's that's what I think is going to happen. Cork, to be fair to them, I think have just found themselves in the wrong side to draw, uh, and I don't think I don't think it's going to be a good day for them at all. I know that sounds awful from from their perspective, but I think that's going to be the reality of it. Yes, I, I totally agree with John. I think it's going to be a turkey shoot, and I think that uh, it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out well for Cork, and I think actually what what it has done is probably masked. The, the fact that Cork are in a quarter final, that might be on the statistics, but what it has masked is is probably something that I think is fundamentally wrong in Cork, given the size of the county, given how many football teams there is there, and given given what where they have been the last number of years. Like, uh, the, the, listen, the tin, the tin hat one was the, I think the implosion uh, during Peter Keane's time of. Uh, in the semi-final that month and the fact that they went through and temporarily beat them I think Cork there's something fundamentally wrong in Cork football the fact is that there's there's a there seems to be an ap- ap- a- a- apathy there from, from fans towards the football team um, and it just can't the, the need they need John there and Tony to go down and do a proper management job down there um, and to and a fresh pair of eyes I'm not sure if there's ever been an outside Cork manager. Um, they tend to appoint selectors that's been in a series of management teams from what I read. Um, they, keep, they keep it very, very internal. But if any Cork was, or if any county was a sleeping giant um, and somebody that's totally uh, underprepared or under, I suppose, cooked or, or ready for, for a quarter final, as this Cork said, like, they struggled to put away a level. Struggled. And uh, they got I just working not, inside the draw loud as well before that. Oh, for God's sake! I I think that the, you know, it's they were in the for them it was a great side of the draw, but certainly for 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 it's not gonna it's not gonna end well for them. Um, and 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 Dublin it doesn't really do Dublin a huge amount. Yes, they need to go out and, and but they'll get no credit for. It. The thing about Dublin is they get no credit from Hammer and Cork out the door, and the fact is. If Kerry come through a tight game against Mayo or whoever comes through that side, they're going to be well prepared to face Dublin. And uh, yes, I know Dublin are they look good and they're back to what they are. But you know they've been they've been hurt, they've been hurt this last two seasons, and uh, um, there will be questions. There will be a series of questions for them to answer in the semi final. Um, not to say that they can't answer. Of course they can. They're, they're still fantastic players. But uh, certainly the way the structure of the championship has worked out for them, it hasn't done them a huge amount of favours in terms of getting up to that level. Obviously, Dublin played Cork and May, May over uh, carry on that side of the draw um, with the winners facing each other then in a semi-final. But uh, that's all on today's show. There's a lot to get in um, and we'll be back to look forward to them quarterfinals um, as well as looking ahead to the Tottenham Cup action. But John and Danny, uh, thanks many for your time. All right, take care, lads. Oh.